Good morning. And welcome to St. John Day. Today is Monday, March 27th, and we're into our last week before Holy Week. But let us begin, as we always begin, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters and brothers, as we begin our celebration, let us praise our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you came to seek out those who were lost. Lord, have mercy. You came to give your life for the sake of all. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather into one family your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O oh God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us come together as we break open this prayer. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In Babylon, there lived a man named Joachim, who married a very beautiful and God-fearing woman, Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah. Her pious parents had trained their daughter according to the law of Moses. Joachim was very rich. He had a garden near his house, and the Jews had recourse to him often because he was the most respected of them all. That year, two elders of the people were appointed judges of whom the Lord said, wickedness has come out of Babylon from the elders who were to govern the people as judges. These men, to whom all brought their cases, frequented the house of Joachim. When the people left at noon, Susanna used to enter her husband's garden for a walk. When the old men saw her enter every day for her walk, they began to lust for her. They suppressed their consciences. They would not allow their eyes to look to heaven and did not keep in mind just judgment. One day, while they were waiting for the right moment, she entered the garden as usual with two maids only. She decided to bathe, for the weather was warm. Nobody else was there except the two elders, who had hidden themselves and were watching her. Bring me oil and soap, she said to the maids, and shut the garden doors while I bathe. As soon as the maids had left, the two old men got up and hurried to her. Look, they said, the garden doors are shut and no one can see us. Give in to our desire and lie with us. If you refuse, we will testify against you that you dismissed your maids because a young man was here with you. I am completely trapped, Susanna groaned. If I yield, it will be my death. If I refuse, I cannot escape your power. Yet, it is better for me to fall into your power without guilt than to sin before the Lord. Then Susanna shrieked, and the old men also shouted at her, as one of them ran to open the garden door. When the people in the house heard the cries from the garden, they rushed in by the side gate to see what had happened to her. At the accusations by the old men, the servants felt very much ashamed, they, for never had any such thing been said about Susanna. When the people came to her husband, Joachim, the next day, the two wicked elders also came, fully determined to put Susanna to death. Before all the people they ordered, send for Susanna, the daughter of Hilkiah, the wife of Joachim. When she was sent for, she came with her parents, children, and all her relatives. All her relatives and the onlookers were weeping. In the midst of the people, the two elders ran up and laid their hands on her head. Through tears she looked up to heaven, for she trusted in the Lord wholeheartedly. The elders made their accusation. 
As we were walking in the garden alone, this woman entered with two girls and shut the doors of the garden, dismissing the girls. A young man who was hidden there came and lay with her. When we, in a corner of the garden, saw this crime, we ran toward them. We saw them lying together. But the man we could not hold because he was stronger than we. He opened the doors and ran off. Then we seized her and asked who the young man was, but she refused to tell us. We testify to this. The assembly believed them, since they were elders and judges of the people, and they condemned her to death. But Susanna cried aloud, O eternal God, you know what is hidden and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am, about to die, though I have done none of these things with which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer. As she was being led to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is this you're saying? He stood in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel, to condemn a woman of Israel without examination and without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel the elder said, Come, sit with us and inform us since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate these two far from each other, that I may examine them. After they were separated, one from the other, he called one of them and said, How you have grown evil with age. Now, have your past sins come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent, and freeing the guilty. Although the Lord says, the innocent and the just, you shall not put to death. Now then, if you were a witness, tell me under what tree you saw them together. Under a mastic tree, he answered. Daniel replied, your fine lie has cost you your head. For the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, Offspring of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you, lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel, and in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me, under what tree you surprised them together? Under an oak, he said. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you also your head. For the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two, so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried aloud, Blessing God who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders, for by their own words Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor. They put them to death. Thus was innocent blood spared that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is, did I get it? Yeah. The responsorial psalm is, even though I walk in the dark valley, I will fear no evil. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I will fear no evil. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I will fear no evil, for you are at my side. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I will fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff, you give me courage. 
Even though I walk in the dark valley, I will fear no evil, for you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup it overflows. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Only goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I will fear no evil, for you are at my side. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked man, says the Lord, but rather in his conversion that he may live. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and he taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. So what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first one to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. And Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, the Lord. My good friend, Monsignor Gary Bowler, had a saying, long readings, short homily. Did we even get a snicker out of that? Okay, <laughs> good thing, I hope so. Um, you got to love the story of Susanna. The story of Susanna is like movie material, right? Um, my former parish saint, Peter Claver, actually has a window commemorating this event. Um, you know, a, we have the beautiful woman, falsely accused, courtroom drama, last-minute stay of ex execution. You know, um, and as I said, it's been retold in art over and over for centuries. I mean, even as recently as this church in stained glass that I came from. And it was turned into one of the most famous American operas of the 20th century. In the first reading, Susanna is innocent. And she's saved when Daniel reveals the deceit of the elders. Then, in the gospel, the woman is guilty, yet is also saved when Jesus points out the guilt of those around her. There's a reason the church pairs these two stories in today's liturgy. Jesus echoes the story of Susanna with his response to the woman committing adultery. Susanna is innocent, and the woman in the temple area has committed grave sin. Yet, Jesus does what Jesus does so well. He flips the script, and he offers that same kind of last-minute stay of execution, again, right out of the movie similar to the one Susanna received. Jesus is making the first narrative bigger. He's expanding it. He's making it more poignant, more important, more relevant to us. It's no longer about the woman 
who committed adultery. It's about everybody else in the temple area. Whenever you read scripture, decide who you are in the narrative. Who are we? And so often I find myself in the crowd condemning the other person. Not being, I never find myself being Jesus. I would like to be, but it's not. It's no longer about the woman who committed adultery. It's about everybody else in the temple area. Likewise, when we're confronted with sin by others, we're called not only to respond to that sin, but to examine our own shortcomings. Where do we have issues like that? No, we didn't commit physical adultery, but did we covet somebody or something? You know, did we do it in our hearts, though maybe not physically? We're called to examine our own shortcomings. This is what Lent is all about, examining our shortcomings, deciding those things we need to work on, and working on. So we, too, should also avoid condemning others. Rather, we should find the lesson in those situations for ourselves. Amen. Please stand for the intercessory prayer. With great love, God created us, sustains us, and through Jesus Christ makes us children of God. We ask God now to hear our prayer. Through the action of the Holy Spirit, may God bless us with concrete signs of growth in Christian unity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Through God's grace, May our minds and hearts be open to embrace our sisters and brothers in Christ throughout the world and foster the unity which the Holy Spirit brings to us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Through our own synodial listening and dialogue, may God prepare our hearts and churches to be transformed by the work of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Through opening our hearts and minds to the presence and activity of the Holy Spirit among all peoples and ourselves, may God increase understanding among all believers and end conflict, especially those aggravated by religious differences. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that God may welcome all those who have died into the joys of eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those prayers we hold in the silence of our own hearts, for these prayers and those entered into our prayer and petition list, that they may be received and answered by our God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, fulfill all our hopes and transform our understanding into praise and worship for you. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring before you as the fruit of bodily penance a joyful purity of heart. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And let us come together and pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, and deliver us from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Has no one condemned you, woman? No one, Lord. Neither shall I condemn you. From now on, go and sin no more. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and I'll say. And for those of you making a spiritual communion from home, let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come, at least spiritually, into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults, and by following Christ, hasten our steps upward toward you. Through Christ our Lord, amen. My brothers and sisters, set free from their sins, O Lord, we pray. The people who call upon you, that living a holy way of life, they may be kept safe from every trial. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Have a very blessed Monday and a very blessed remainder of your week. As the talk show host says, we're here all week. So we'll see you back here tomorrow at 8 o'clock as we enter, hopefully, very, very soon into Holy Week. God bless you and have a beautiful day. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Adoration follows immediately.
My Lord Jesus Christ, it is your great love for us that keeps you day and night present in the Blessed Sacrament, full of compassion and love, waiting for us to visit you. I believe that you are really present in the sacrament of the altar. From the depth of my heart, I adore you, and I thank you for the many graces you have given me, especially for the gift of yourself in this sacrament, for the gift of your most holy mother as my mother, and for the privilege of visiting you in this church at this time. My Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I am sorry for my ingratitude, and I now resolve, with the help of your grace, never to offend you again. I consecrate my entire self to you, my thoughts, my feelings, and all that I have. From now on, do whatever you want with me. All that I ask for is your love and strength to do your holy will. Amen.
Father in heaven, we give you thanks for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, into the world to be our Lord, Savior, and High Priest. We believe that in the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus won for us the gift of eternal life by his sacrifice on the cross. We believe that Jesus renews this sacrifice in the Holy Eucharist through the ministry of his priests. Father, we earnestly beseech you to raise up holy priests in your church. Grant young men the strength to accept generously the call to the priesthood. May they joyfully give their lives so that all your people can receive your holy word and sacraments, especially the Holy Eucharist, the great gift of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior, and High Priest, in whose name we make our prayer. Amen. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary, most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, virgin and mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. And blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.